Dr. Professor P.C. Manoria, Executive President, Third World Congress on Cardiometabolic Medicine at Hotel Lirida, 27, 28 January 2024. With me is Dr. Peter Shaw's President-Elect India International Diabetes Federation. So the big issue in diabetes these days is there has been revolutionary change in the management of diabetes. The glucosentric approach has improved yeah. tremendously with continuous glucose monitoring. We have two innovative molecules, the SGLT2 yeah. inhibitors, which are a panacea for heart failure, a boon for yeah. CKD. They yeah. slow down the trajectory of heart failure. We have GLB-1 receptor agonists, they decrease ACV demands. But the problem is all these agents may decrease morbidity, mortality, but do not decrease the number of diabetic patients. So our aim is to make the country or society free of diabetes. And therefore, special prevention measures has to be taken. So what is new in prevention of diabetes? It should be a simplistic measure so that everybody can adopt it. Thank you very much for raising this question. And it's a very important topic. And the answer actually is very short. Diabetes is not only treatment by medication. Diabetes is much more. Um, if we ask ourselves, where is diabetes coming from? And look on the global scale. The main increase in number of people with diabetes is due to our change in lifestyle. And it's a great honor for me to be here at this Congress where cardiologists and diabetologists uh, talk to each other. Because um, especially here in India, there is um, an advantage and a disadvantage. The advantage is most of the people are vegetarians here. And this is actually a good healthy diet. But we know today that eating a lot of carbs, and especially fried carbs, this pushes the development of diabetes. And we see in India that the, uh, people get diabetes 20 years earlier than in, uh, in Europe or North America, and the development of diabetes is faster. Why I'm saying this? Because this is directly related to the aspect of prevention. If we understand that the pathophysiology is faster, the logical consequence is we should act faster to prevent diabetes, and we should act in a way to address the pathophysiology. And there are, in my eyes, only two ways, or maybe three ways, or two and a half ways. And one way is physical activity. We know very, very well that physical activity is the best way of preventing diabetes from developing. Why? If you use your muscles, every muscle cell consumes glucose for energy expenditure, so automatically you lower your uh, blood sugar. And the data are very, very strong that only walking 1,000 steps more than you normally do lowers the blood sugar the same way as 1,000 milligrams of metformin are doing. So the standard diabetes pill. And uh, the recommendation is walking 10,000 steps a day. So this is actually, if you're honest, not very new information. We know this, but now we have the evidence for us. But there is a second aspect. We have learned in the last um, years, last three to four years, that the pure presence of fat in the liver um, is destroying the pathophysiology of developing diabetes. So basically, if I say destroying, it makes diabetes development faster. Instead of 10 years, you develop it in two years. So the pure presence of fat in the liver makes you becoming a non-responder to lifestyle change and also diabetes medication. So it's actually a disaster. And uh, the question where the liver fat is coming from is also very easy. One strong factor is the consumption of artificial sweetener. You eat artificial sweetener, this changes your microbiome, uh, and this change in bacteria in your gut, they produce fatty acid. Yeah? If you, if you uh, understand this, that this bacteria produce fat, and we uh, accumulate the fat in our body, and especially in the liver. So the question is, if, di if uh, liver fat is becoming such a strong progenitor for diabetes, how to get the liver fat away? And here is a very cool answer. If you fast for two weeks without eating any calorie, and yes, uh, you understand it correctly, two weeks and not zero. eating anything, zero <laughs> calorie, no juice, no fruits, no coconut water, zero. Then you can totally abolish, totally remove the fat in the liver. And today we know this is the fastest gain of health you can accumulate for yourself or your patients. And uh, why is this working so well? If you fast, for the first three days, you consume all the glucose in your body. And so you mobilize the glucose, and then the glucose is gone. And the body has to search for another source of energy. And what is he taking? Ketone bodies. This is the, 
normal hunger metabolism is an evolutionary conserved uh, way of uh, metabolism. And where is he getting the ketone bodies from? From the fat. And now we are actually very lucky because in the liver and the pancreas we have glucagon. And glucagon is a very strong, uh, let me say it, it's a sexy hormone because this helps in this tissue to break down fat. So if you fast from day four onwards, you mobilize fat in the pancreas, in the liver and the visceral fat. And this is the most targeted, most efficient and most sustainable way for prevention of diabetes, but also for treatment of people with diabetes. And finally, even if you have diabetes, type two diabetes for let's say five or even 10 years and you fast, up to 60% of the people can lead to a total remission of diabetes. So I must say, we know fasting since 4,000 years. We actually have forgotten about the power of fasting. And I think this will lead to a new endeavor or new um, uh, exploration of fasting as treatment for people with type 2 diabetes, but also for diabetes prevention. The big issue is when the treatment, when the preventative measures are so simple, why they are highly underutilized. Diabetes is reaching escalating proportions, epidemic, pandemic, India, 101 yeah. million diabetes. So why it is it not being utilized? Um, it's a very good question. And I think we as physicians are part of the problem because um, we think too short. Uh, we see glucose, we see the patient and we think we have to prescribe a medication. The medications we have today are excellent, are very good. They are helping the patient, but it's not a cure of diabetes. A cure of diabetes means for me, removal of visceral fat, removal of liver and pancreatic fat, because then all the, the stimuli, all the source of diabetes development is gone. Treating with medication lowers glucose. So it looks like that the patient is free of the disease, but the patient still has diabetes. A true prevention would, for, would be for me physical activity, changing dietary habits and fasting once for two weeks, maybe every year or every second year. But it still does not answer your question, why do we have so many people with diabetes? We learn a lot about health determinants. And one uh, I already have mentioned is our lifestyle. But there is new information, for, for example, air pollution and diabetes. Um, if you are walking behind a diesel car, you breathe in medium-sized particles, and we could say, we don't care about, but research shows that two weeks later, you find these particles in the beta cell, and in cell culture, they are destroying beta cell function. So air pollution can become a public health determinant for diabetes development. And this could maybe explain in some instances why the number of people is growing. But I personally believe the change of our lifestyle, eating more fat, eating more fried carbs and eating artificial sweetener, this is a big push for diabetes development. So this is an excellent thing for remission in diabetes. Yeah. What about the current status of reversal of diabetes? Who are the subset of patients who could reverse diabetes and how long it is sustainable? Um, it very much depends how motivated the patient is and what the patient is doing. If you think about someone who has a, a type 2 diabetes and is treated, let's say, with two oral um, agents, um, and he is starting physical activity, he can alone with physical, physical activity uh, reach um, a reversal of diabetes. If there is a patient who has even more drugs or longer duration, I would strongly recommend, for example, the fasting. But it's not, fasting is not only something for diabetes patients, also healthy individuals can fast. So, uh, and the lifestyle change can lead to a reversal of diabetes, but then it's important to keep on with this lifestyle. If you reverse diabetes and then you say, okay, now I can become lazy and I'm not physically active anymore, then the diabetes is coming back. But reversal or remission for me is actually the same. Yeah, if you reverse diabetes, you lower glucose, and uh, if you are not tackling the origin of diabetes development, the lowering glucose is not as efficient. Tackling the origin makes a difference. So one of the things uh, I could understand, it is the lack of dissemination of the current understanding of diabetes. Yeah. Many physicians, diabetes scholars do not know that the basic fact lies in the liver and the pancreas, so you can reduce the fat in the pancreas and liver 
diabetes at least can go in remission and maybe in the long term if you continue to yeah. follow this go under reversal. But I must say this is a discussion on a very high scientific level and all the aspects we are talking about uh, are data from the last three, four years. So we actually cannot expect that every colleague in the, in the country knows this. But this is our obligation. We have to talk about, we have to educate our colleagues, we have to teach our colleagues, we have to develop guidelines uh, stating this. And uh, I will become the president of the International Diabetes Federation. And in about uh, one and a half year from now, we will release a guideline, for example, about fasting and diabetes. In about three months, we will release a guideline about hyperglycemia, uh, management of hyperglycemia. And this will be a very innovative modern guideline helping all the colleagues how to diagnose and how to reach a reversal of diabetes. The fasting guideline in one and a half year will be the one for remission of diabetes. You are the first president who is focusing on prevention, prevention, yes. remission and reversal. I have not seen any idea of president who is focusing on this treatment, treatment, treatment. Now it's prevention, prevention. And uh, this, my heart is beating for prevention because I actually also believe we know how prevention works. So um, we are physicians from an ethical aspect. We have to do whatever you can to prevent the disease. If we only treat the disease, we come very late. Prevention of the disease, in my eyes, comes close to a cure. And that's why it's for me prevention and prevention again and prevention again what the International Diabetes Federation uh, will do. Not only should do, we will do this. Treatment does not decrease the number of patients. Prevention will decrease the number of patients. Exactly. Yes and no. If we get better with prevention, this often also means we will diagnose earlier. And this uh, um, ultimately will to an e lead to an increase of number of people with diabetes. So there are many people with diabetes who are undiagnosed in the world. And if we act more on prevention, we will find them. And by this, we will increase the number. But we, we do a, a good thing because we start with prevention and all these people have the chance then to do preventive measures and I would say by physical activity to walk away from diabetes. One of the misconceptions is that Diet Coke is very healthy. You can take any amount of Diet Coke. What is the reality? Yeah, this is, this is very important information. Um, and we are part of the problem because we as physicians told our patients um, in, if they want to drink a Coke, take a Diet, Diet Coke, Coke. Be, because you don't have to count carbs. And uh, today we know that eating or drinking artificial sweetener is a big problem and uh, not because of the artificial sweetener. There are 38 artificial sweetener available worldwide and 36 change the microbiome. And microbiome means this is a complexity of all the bacteria in our gut. And especially here in India, there are 14 different bacteria who invade the gut based on the artificial sweetener. And at this point, it doesn't matter. It still helps us to digest. But the bad thing is this bacteria produce fatty acids and very saturated fatty acids, so very stiff fatty acids. And then they go through the uh, bowl. Um, we go into the bloodstream. And where do they land? In the liver. So eating artificial sweetener or drinking artificial sweetener changes the microbiome, the changed bacteria produce fatty acids and they make fat accumulation in the liver. So they, we call it MAFL, metabolic associated liver disease, or also NAFL, non-alcoholic associated fatty liver disease. And um, today we must say this is probably the main, main driver of diabetes development. So tackling this, I think, will have an effect on a global scale. So why don't this company can be banned? <laughs> Um, um, I don't think that this will happen. We will have, for the next decades, we will have many people with diabetes. But, uh, and we need, for those people where we cannot prevent, we have to have a good treatment. And I must say, uh, as I started in diabetes care, there were four drugs available in, in diabetes management. Today we have 163 combination of good drugs. So we never have been so good in treating diabetes than we are today. And if the patient is on our clinic, I think this is mostly also not a problem. Also, price is not always a problem because, especially here in India, you have very uh, a high number of generic drugs for a low price. But the problem is to reach the patient. So availability of care and accessibility of care is a big, big issue in many countries worldwide. 
So what we as International Diabetes Federation will act very intensively on is for going into these countries and finding the people and helping the healthcare systems really going into the villages and finding the people because there are many people in the world who have diabetes and they don't know. And providing a treatment or preventive measure to them will be of good quality of care. Thank you very much, Professor Peter Shaw. It was a great honor to be here. Messages of experience during this course, and I'm sure we will disseminate these messages, which are very simple and easy to implement. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.